to me, Fishing Planet, you know, it has some things, but the if you want the best, to me, the best simulator when it comes to fishing has it's Fishing Planet. All right, there are other ones out there which are great simulators too, but this one here, uh, it comes closer to the experience, I think, I believe, better than any other one. And I'm talking to you as a sports fisherman and as a business fisherman, as someone has done, who actually has worked in the industry to make a living. Uh, I've done both sides of it, sports fishing and making a living of fishing, but this is why, this is a long time ago. But I've done a lot of fishing in my life. I was almost born with a fishing rod in my hand. And I'll tell you, this uh, this game is really awesome. It comes really close to the fishing experience. All right. Uh, we're going to be doing Emerald Lakes today. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I'll be covering different lakes here and putting my uh, input on my fishing experience. And uh, But this one, if Emerald Lakes is one of the best ones you can enjoy when it comes to the... Uh, the the feel of it it's is really good uh, I got a f uh, this is a live broadcast so I have to fix some things before I go live but before I do that I'm gonna leave you I'm gonna put this back over here to the inventory so you can see what I'm using for my inventory that'll give you an idea uh, as I'm fixing this right here for my uh, live broadcast I just basically got to change the thumbnail that I don't have the proper thumbnail on there and make sure that it's broadcasting correctly all right I like to get a clear broadcast before I get started. Alright, so let me make sure everything is on there, and uh, save my settings, and then I just got to make sure that I'm broadcasting okay. So I got to go up to the front page, and then we're going to start the uh, game here. I had a little problem starting the game a couple times today. Uh, I was actually on the uh, challenge, you know, once you do the challenges, the missions, and I, I usually don't do the missions. Sometimes I do very rarely what I do the missions. Uh, it's not to say they're bad or anything, no, I just... Don't have a lot of interest with them. Um, let me make sure my voice is coming out good. I do very there you go. Okay, so we're good to go. And uh, we're going to head over there to the dock. Head back to the dock. And let's go back fishing here. Alright. Alright. As you can see, I got my boat here. This is my boat over here. Uh, you can do, a, if, if you don't have a boat, you can do a lot of fishing off the dock. Alright, if you stand out here in this corner. And I'll show you here. You can do a lot of fishing. And what I do is because the boat, it's in my way. I'll probably get on the boat and do fishing from here. All right. Now I can move the boat anywhere I want to. Emerald. This boat here is quite a large boat for this kind of lake. Uh, but it's, I use it for my other, my other stuff. So on here. And uh, it's, it's to me, it's the, this boat, it's a good investment for me. Uh, if you guys, it's a couple of dollars on the, in the DLC. Okay. It's very cheap, you can say. And you get a boat, and you get to go around. You get the, uh, you get a couple. I think you get an eye. You get the uh, blue, uh, the uh, the blue crab island. It'll come with it, and it'll come with the boat. And it's uh, it, and you get around all over the place with it. And of course, you, if you want, you can get a canoe, and use those. Uh, let me do my fishing from here for now. Now it's early in the morning, but sometimes I'm gonna there. You can catch the pikes early in the morning. All right. Okay. I didn't have. I thought I was gonna have problems with the lure, and I didn't. It's a little small. It's not the rice. Uh, the lure is not the uh, the right side lure. I should have a bigger lure on there, but this is what I got. That's what I'm using. So the cast is going to be a little short. Uh, it's pretty much on the pikes. If you want to catch pikes, it's going to be a it's going to be pretty much a stop and go action on that to get the pikes. Now what I'm doing is I'll probably move the time on it. All right, but you can do fishing from here. And uh, what I want to do is, before I get deep into this, let me get on the boat, and uh, I'm going to explain to you a little bit more stuff here. Before we get, let me get to the front. All right. Now, anything along here, if we see that yellow, those yellow weeds, all the way from up there, anything, just don't get yourself snagged up on there. But along there, you get a lot of pikes. This is the best place to find pikes. And then you got pikes way out there. You'll get some pikes if you cast off them here. But you got these lilies over here. If you cast near them and just don't cast on top of them, you can get some of the pikes. And like I said, I use this casting spoon. All right. But before I get heavy into this and start doing some fishing, I wanted I wanted you guys to check out the inventory again and see and see where we're getting here, what we're getting into. I got a uh, a heavy rod basically. A uh, it goes up to uh, 23. It goes from six to 23 pound. And the line that I have, I believe, is a 20 pound test. 
on here. So it's, everything is heavy because I do a lot of heavy fishing. Uh, a lot of the I do a lot of fishing over there at the uh, Blue Crab Island, and a lot of my gear is set up for that. All right, and um, what you got here? Is, this is the gear that I'm using here. Now you can do the uh, you can do the uh, hang on a second. I'm trying to get back to the inventory here. All right. Alright. That's why I ended up in a special inventory. Alright. Alright, let me try to get back to the uh why is it doing that? It's like a little glitchy there. Alright. Alright. This is what I wanted you to look at. You can fish here uh with the regular bobs and uh in your reel. And you can use some of the bait. Like uh, you got, you can use small minnows, and grasshoppers are good. Small minnows, grasshoppers, even flies are good uh, for the fishes or in here. And uh, let me take a. I'm just we're gonna before I start fishing, I want to make sure you guys understand where we're at here. Okay. And look at the species of fish here for one second. Uh, you got the uh, black carp and uh, some of the smaller fishes. Go the, the the pikes is what I'm after really. Uh, you got the Chinese one, and you got some shiners in there, and you got uh, grass pikes out there also. Uh, Northern pike, you got that. You got the pumpkin seed. Pumpkin seeds, uh, they you can catch those around the liddies, and uh, they're good with the. Uh, I I actually caught all those with grasshoppers, and here it says a little different the bait. If you look at the baits that they're asking you for there, for the telling you here, I've actually I'm almost sure I caught them with grasshoppers and worms. All right. Uh, the red worms are good for the pikes. Uh, for these, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be fishing part of these today, but it gives you an idea of the kind of fish you got here. Uh, you got more of these uh, pikes there, and then you also got the uh, the walleye. At uh, one time, the uh, this Emerald Lake used to be full of walleyes. When they first when they first started putting the species of walleyes in these Emerald Lakes, I'm talking about a couple of years ago when I used to play this. Uh, mostly, I play on my PC. Uh, it was walleyes after walleyes, and it was daytime or nighttime, <laughs> pretty much for loading up on walleyes. And I did pretty good on that. Now, if you could see my level, my level says 26 on here. That's because I'm on the PlayStation. But my level on PC is like 50. I'm almost, I think I only have one more left in Russia or something like that. Hey, uh, one more, uh, one more place to fish that I haven't fished. But everything else is pretty much I fish. All right, on PC. I kind of had to rebuild. I had to start from the very beginning and do everything. I wish I wish they found a way where you can, if you fish on PC, you can move all your stuff over to the to to uh, PlayStation. You know, all the stuff, all everything you bought, all the gear, your levels, everything can be moved over, and you have the the whole thing on PlayStation. It would be great. That way, you're not to start from the bottom again. I had to restart from the bottom again, but my levels, like I said, it's high. It's a lot higher than that, 26. So walleyes, uh, nighttime fishing, they they, uh, they do pretty good at nighttime fishing. Uh, I don't know now. I haven't fished there in a while for the uh, walleyes, but they are in there. So let's go back, and we're going to go back to the uh, to the lake here. And we're going to do, I'm on the boat here right now, because that way it's not in my way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the time. All right, I'm going to move the time over to around 12. 12 should be, should be fine. So I'm moving to 12 p.m. And this way, I don't waste a lot of time here. Now I got the wrong fishing rod here. What I want to do is I want to change to number one, the one, the uh, the other fishing rod that I have. Okay. All right. This is the one that has the spoon on it. All right. So what you see, you see the splashes there. Those are probably going to be. And you see one of my markers way deep in there. Uh, that's gonna. That's one of the places I've actually caught. I put the boat on this side and fish that way. All right, but I'm going to be fishing right here now for the, uh, watch out you don't get into the weeds. And we're going to be fishing for uh, the pikes here. And like I said, it's pretty much just stop and go action here. Let's see if we got a nice hit in there. Don't let your, uh, if you're going too fast, let's see on this rod, I'll probably go, I have to slow it down a little bit because this rod, it has a very powerful motor, so I'm going a little bit too fast on it. But don't get discouraged and recast. Usually this lure does pretty good here. If it doesn't do too good, change it over to another lure. I got a couple different lures on here. Alright. 
let it go down a little bit and then you can bring it in I call pikes with all kind of crazy I just had a bite on them I almost had them I call pikes with all kind of stuff this might be a pike right here there should be a pike it's mo mainly what you're going to catch in that size pikes see I don't have problem bringing them in with this big rod there you go there's your first pike, Chinese pike. Oh, you don't catch me. Oh, you let me go. I'm from China. I'm here illegally. I come from China. You start popping in the water. Yeah, this, I think, I don't, I think the, uh, the, well, this pike actually, no, this pike actually is okay. I, I don't believe. There are some, some of the species that don't belong here, but this one is a China, I call it. It's not the Chinese pike. <laughs> a Chinese pike. Uh, here we go. We got this one as a keeper. Uh, you're not going to catch uh, a lot of big fish here. I think maybe. The biggest one may be like six pound five, maybe. Okay, I'm not, uh, this is like the smaller ones here, but they uh, it's pretty fun. I like fishing emerald lakes, it's pretty fun, and uh, you can you can bring in a lot of these fishes here. Here you go, we got a little price here going. Okay, you see the pikes right now, you just you see them there, but this is a good spot always to fish from. Uh, maybe later I'll take the boat out there. And I'll, I just had another bite there. There was another bite there. Let's see if we get another bite going there. Okay. Comes too close, just pull your rod up. Let's see if I can get a. Up. I'm trying to get my. Right around there. Let it go down a little bit. And it's stop and go action is what it is. Just stop and go. I've got that one right there. It's basically just stop and go action is what you got on there. There you go. That's another pike right there. There she goes. And this was actually a record for you. I caught them bigger than that. Well, I, you know, everything I can say on PC. Uh, if you got the wrong line here, you got the wrong rod, You're gonna. it's not going to be that easy to bring them in. All right. Even on that smaller fish. Just a little stop and go action, and you should be set to go here. I remember a couple of years ago, I've actually came in here. That was like the you know beginning stage of fishing, uh, fishing plan. And I had, of course, that beginning gear you could say. And I remember I fought with this pike for like around 15 minutes. It just it just could not bring him in. Alright, and I didn't, and I was trying to control my drag, trying not to break a line, and at the end, he won, I lost. <laughs> so, but it was, it was an experience. It was pretty fun. Oh yeah, that's a weed, that was probably a weed there, once we've seen that going up to the air like that. Like I said, stop and go action here, just bring in your, uh, Lure, stop and go. You should be okay. What I want to do is probably move the boat, set it up in a little different way. And we'll do the fishing more along there. Yeah, let me do that. Get on the boat, and I'll move the boat away to the side here. Well, I just get the fish along the inside side there. Right. Get the sound up a little high so you guys can. Alright. I'm just going to move it over here. Oh, uh, this is a big boat for this. Alright. Let me see if I can actually I wanted to move back over here is where I wanted to. You can see where I'm at already. This is like I said, it's a big boat. 
<laughs> I've actually got <laughs> wait, 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 wait. There you go. I've actually I've actually put it in the bushes on uh on the other island. On the uh blue gill island. I one time put it on the bushes. I just wanna back up here, that's what I wanna do. Right around here. Uh, that's good to go. That's where I wanna be. Alright, we're just gonna move I got the little motor in front, which is great. This boat is great. It's got all kind of great stuff on it. And it's even got that small electrical motor. Right around here is where you want to be at. All right. Now, if you want to drop anchor, that's up to you. I usually don't drop anchor. And then you can fish right along here. All right. And that way you can uh, see if you get some of the pikes there. They're in along this grass here. Scared the living gang gang out of them. I had a bite on there. It didn't hang in there. Oh, just just there. He just came up to the boat. You see him where the he was coming up to the boat there. Now this gold uh, casting spoon does pretty good here. But if it gets, if you cast a couple of times and you don't catch anything, just get yourself another spoon. Try a different spoon. No, I don't do cut and paste on my videos. Whatever happens, happens. If I catch, I catch. I don't, I don't. And that's the way it is. You know, people sometimes, they'll do the uh, cut and paste. I don't do that. Uh, here you go. This is a nice size one. It's, like I said, like a record. It's not really, I actually call them bigger. Um, as you can see, it's three pounder. If you would have had a, uh, one of those beginner rods, you'll have a hard time bringing this guy. This three pounder. You might even be able to get them so but as you can see it pays pretty good uh 570 bucks uh 24 inches and a little bit uh about three pounds and a half so that's a keeper right there and we got about 43 on the xps so we're doing pretty good hey blue six you're back on there blue six is on the chat room because i'm live here on youtube as i as i'm doing this and blue six is on there blue six you need to go fishing Go out there, get yourself a fishing rod, and go fishing, man. It's the most relaxing thing you can do, is fishing. There you go, so another one coming in. It's, it's a small one. This is a oh, fish. I mean, it's got to be something really small. Yeah, this is uh, totally different here. we got a yellow uh, patcher. Uh, look at that. Man, yeah, small dude there. Now, you see, all the, you see wreckers on here, right? That's because I've not fished a lot of Emerald Lake on PC. I mean on the uh, PlayStation. I played it on PC a lot. But not on PlayStation. That's why you see all these records popping up. I mean I know all this I know the entire lake inside out. It's one of the lakes that I fished probably the most uh when I was starting out on uh the fish fishing plant. Probably one of the lakes that frustrated me the most but <laughs> but I fished it all the all the time. And I've always liked the ambient ambience on this lake the way it looks like it's the kind of place like you want to have a house and have a lake like this behind your house you go fishing once in a while okay we just had a bite on there with the end okay yeah uh, blue i can't read much what you're saying there blue six because you're you're uh the, the uh the monitor is away from me and i got a big i got a the uh the other screen is the one that's playing the uh, game but uh yeah when i play this i got a uh, multiple screens open up and uh I have one which monitors my uh, my broadcast on YouTube when I'm doing a live broadcast, and that one you has the chat room. But the uh, monitor that I'm looking at, it's bigger where I play the games on, 
and they don't have the chat room is not on there because I don't like the appearance of the chat room. I used to put the appearance. I don't like it when they man. It's just like they're biting, and this must be something smaller because it bites and let's go. So I use the uh, bigger monitor. I'm always looking at the bigger monitor. Usually, and then the smaller monitor. Uh, it's kind of far away from me, and I don't see the writing on it too good. But I know that's Blue Six out there. I can tell that's Blue Six. Uh, I hope you're doing good out there. And I do fishing. Like I do these games at all time of night. So, Let me uh, change the lure here to something else. Let me change it over to the uh, silver lure, possibly. Uh, let me see what else I got on here. I brought. Let me change it over to this uh to this red and white lure. Alright. Sometimes this one does okay. This is like a hit and miss lure. Sometimes it does really good and the other times you don't get nothing on. Very little in there. Alright. Now here's one thing. If you had a, a rod not as strong as the one I have, you may you'll probably be catching more faster the uh, the pikes. I have a heavy uh, rod, and sometimes, I don't know why, it's just kind of like, it's like the pikes are afraid or something. <laughs> I mean, in reality, they wouldn't make a difference. Uh, a rod's a rod, and, you know. But here in this game, sometimes the rod that you have determines how much fish you catch. Uh, I keep getting a bite on there. It's really frustrating. It's a small bite. It might be one of the small little fish, but, but the pikes are not biting here right now. What I can do is I can change over. It's another rod that I have. You see the pikes out there. Alright. I'll try from this side here. So like I said, the uh, rods and reels sometimes determine how good of how much fish you're gonna get out here. And it's kinda I don't know. They, it's kind of weird because yeah, you'll you'll pretty much use the same um, lure, you could say. And uh, just because you have a heavier reel and a heavier rod, uh, you don't get the fish. Here we go. There you go, a grass uh, pike there. Two hundred and twenty-eight bucks. Uh, smaller fish. I'm still eighteen inches. Let me see if I can get a nice little picture there. See what we look at. I just want to see some. See, there you go. And you got me. All right, where in the heck did you get those boots? I didn't get those boots. I don't like those boots. <laughs> Somehow he got those boots. Somebody changed my boots on there? Well, anyway, I got to probably change his clothes. This guy's boots are kind of crappy. So there you go. That's small pike. You can see how small that is. If you go over there to Michigan, uh, St. Clair. The pikes are a lot bigger over there in St. Clair. Man, I, I go there a lot, but on here on uh, on PlayStation, I still haven't reached that level. And I fished a lot of the... Uh, a lot of times I fished over there in Michigan. There's a spot there in Michigan you can get a lot of pikes, uh, bigger pikes. Alright. See, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get along... Trying to go along the bushes, the, uh, the, the weeds here. This is where the pikes... In reality, this is where the pikes will be at. Uh, pikes are usually not out in the middle of the lake, unless the temperature is warm enough or whatever the temperature they like. It's in that area, but they usually around this area because this is where the small fish are at and other kind of stuff that they can. You know, the pike is a predator fish. It's after other small fishes is what they're after. So they hang around here because these are the, you know the weeds are the nurseries of fish. This is where they lay their eggs, and a lot of times a lot of the fishes. Uh, the small fish will hang around these weed areas, and that's where the pikes are at. Uh, they're hunting for the small fish. And uh, some of the pikes can be devastated. Some of the pikes, uh, there's a Chinese pike that they brought. It's up in uh, northern parts of the United States and, and in Canada, I think, that they have it already. And it's really demolishing the the ecosystem. It's really going to the dogs, you could say. Uh, they're eating everything. And they're having, they're trying to eradicate that somebody brought them from China and dropped them in the lake. You know, I think a lot of the stuff that we're having with species like pythons, you know, Everglades, pikes, 
and all this stuff. We have to be careful with that. There are enemies. We know the United States has a lot of enemies. Some of this stuff may not be just somebody accidentally dropping one of these things, and it could be, uh, you know, could be somebody actually sabotaging our 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 ecosystem, our you know, our our systems. And yeah, of course, a lot of these wildfires in California, which can be questionable. Who's really doing that? Who might be behind this stuff? You know. Oh, I got a bite on there, but this hook just can't seem to bring him in right there. This uh, lure there. There's a lot of weird stuff sometimes going on. I remember one time where the Everglades were having problems. They still got it. The uh, they had a lot of uh, uh, the Amazon. Uh, the uh, Oh, there he is. I was concentrating on this. <laughs> I knew there was something continue to bite me. This looks like a bigger one here. There you go. Well, it's not a bigger one. It's three three pounds. A little bit over three pounds. Twenty three inches, and I paid about five hundred and uh, and six dollars in Northern Pike. This is a pike here. Okay. Uh, okay. Look at that. It's that beauty there. How many pounds we got on our? We don't got a lot of this. I got a a pretty much big big net. Okay. I just noticed something. I should have a 500 pound net here. Uh, that's what I should have here. But I don't. <laughs> so there's something change here. I think. See, I have two. I have two versions of this game. I have one called the Fisherman. Which is still, uh, is still the uh, fishing planet, and then I have one called the fishing planet. All right, the fisherman is basically a game that uh, pretty much everything is there for you. you kind of purchase the game, where the fishing planet is someone that you kind of get in there. I may actually be in a different one that I thought today, but anyway, here you go. Let's see, there you go. No, we used to be moving the camera before, and now I can't move the camera. All right. Well, we got another one there. Let's see if you continue. Now, you can see the lure that I'm using. Yeah, I'm going to continue to fish with this one. doesn't matter. Fishing, uh, The fisherman, the fishing planet, is the same thing. It's fishing planet, all right? Except one is like you own the, uh, it's more like you're, the game's got a lot of the stuff already there. Where the other one, you have to constantly work yourself up the levels and purchase the stuff. Ooh, we almost got that one there. Almost got another one there, so. But I th it should be the fishing planet. Because the thing is, I'm noticing that I don't have the uh, the 550 pound pin. I have the 250 pound pin, and and usually that's where the fishing fisherman has it. Man, it just can it just like bites and let's go and bites. And, and you can feel it's like, that's a good thing about the PlayStation. That uh, you can feel the uh, fish biting on the rod, because it has uh, right up to there. Let me see. Again. Sometimes if I let them get right up to the boat, and you, know, you end up catching them anyway. Now my boat's kind of moved from the area that I had it in, but I'm still good to go here. Let me bring it up here. There you go. We got another one there. It's a smaller one here, on the grass bike here. Uh, maybe a smaller, definitely smaller one there. I almost got caught in the weeds there. Oh, it's a good bite, but uh, it didn't stay with it. Let's see if we can get him here. I was going to say what I was I was talking about is there are uh, the Everglades start getting a problem with piranhas, and uh, once in a while you'll still catch some of these piranhas in the Everglades. 
as people somehow got him and then they let him go and it really caused a problem I don't know if they eradicated the uh, situation that they had with those because they will eat everything up and uh, it creates uh, it really destroys the ecosystem and and any place where you put those fishes they're, they're very destructive fishes they'll eat just about anything and if you get a large amount of piranhas you could get eaten alive <laughs> if you fall in the water and they had something I think the Oscars also were not needed to Florida and uh, those started to fill in the, the the rivers and there was a problem also with that Oscars, piranhas, pythons, uh, Burmese pythons became a problem in Florida it's still a problem, it's a major problem in Florida I don't know if they're going to be able to ever eradicate that problem with the Burmese python and these other pythons that they have in the Everglades but they're really destroying also the Everglades and it's, it's just people that bring them in they should have never allowed them to come into the US period because people are not responsible they're just idiots they think the snake is going to stay small and they don't realize a python can be like 20, 30 feet <laughs> it's just a huge thing man end up eating your pet, your kids, and your and even maybe even you have actually people have got killed by their by their pet pythons, you know. I just don't you know, I know people out there they like different kind of pets. I myself don't see why in the heck would I want to keep a snake or like a python or anything. Just don't see the I've only I don't even find an interest in keeping birds in my in a in a cage. I just feel like they should belong out there flying around, not in a cage. Fish is different. If you have a fish aquarium, a nice aquarium, it's a little different when it comes to fish. Because the fish, uh, small fish, they usually if in, in the wild will hang around in a certain area. They won't wander off too far into the ocean or into a lake. So that so to them, it's it's okay. To me, I feel like it's okay as long as the water's clean. You feed them, you should be okay with fish. And uh, but when it comes to a bird or something like that, what the heck you want to keep the thing? The thing needs to fly around. You want to keep them in a cage, you know, or snake in your house. Why do you want to get snake? That thing almost jumped in my boot. <laughs> that uh, that pike almost jumped in my boot. I might have to change the lure here, cause it's it was doing okay, and I'm getting these little hits on there. There you go. Well, we still got another one, so there's another one coming in. There you go. There you go. We got another one there. As long as we get them. So, uh, Blue Six, if you're still out there, man, get the barbecue going. Get some beers. Invite some nice girls over. And we'll take the pythons over there and start cooking them. <laughs> Make some pythons. Uh, pythons. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if people actually eat these pike, uh, the uh, northern pikes, all these pike. I have no idea. I I caught them, but I I've, I've actually released them. I, there you go. There's another one right there. Uh, let me see what blue six said. Let me just want to see what you said on there. Oh. <laughs> Blue Six says he doesn't drink beer. Okay, man. You're more like a wine guy, right? Or a hell. Or oh, the heavy stuff. <laughs> I'm not just I'm just joking with you, Blue Six. Oh uh, man. Yeah, I'd like I'm not a big I'm not a big drinker, I mean if it's there, it's there, I'll drink some of it. I'm not the kind of person that just goes hunting for beer and alcohol and that's just never has been it's never been me. I just never uh I mean, if I if I if somebody invites me for a beer or two, fine. But I'm not one of those persons like these people that have to have their alcohol every day. You just I actually go months, sometimes even years without even any alcohol. It's just not a big thing in my life. I like wines. Wines are pretty good. Like if you're out for dinner and you know, good company and stuff like that. And you're in some nice dinner place and you get some Chardonnay or some red wine or something along those lines. 
and um, good to have some wine. Yeah, Let's stick with the. Uh, I think you said something about juice there, because I think something towards the end. My boat's being pulled around here. I may have to drop the anchor on here. This one's true. This is a bigger fish. Yeah, look at that. Look at them go. Yeah, look at look at them go. Oh yeah, this is definitely got to be a bigger fish here. There you go. It's a wrecker. It's a three. It's almost four pounds. Let me see what that kind of a uh, picture I get here. There you go. The man of the hour. Got yourself a nice one there, huh? He doesn't have much of a smile on his face, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's see, see what he got himself there. Nice pike. I'm gonna have to get the motion on that fish a little bit better. All right, but this pretty good. So let me go back out here. A keeper, we got a keeper there. And some of the bigger ones may actually be out there. So let's see if we can get something else. I got another one here. This is like a small fish. If it's a, yeah, it's a small fish. I was beginning to wonder if it wasn't even a fish. There you go. Yeah, it's a small one. I grasp it. It didn't even. It didn't even come out to a pound. catch a couple more out here. Well, as you can see, I'm pretty much stuck with the same lure and and uh, doing pretty good with it so far. That's a bigger one here. I'm going to have to drop anchor here because I'm getting totally out of position here. There's another one. This one is definitely a record. It's a four pounder here. Uh, Northern Pike, four pounds. We'll check him out a little, see how big he is. A lot bigger. You can get him a lot bigger over there at the Michigan, uh, St. Clair. You get a lot of bigger pikes there. And Alaska, you also you get them big. I fished Alaska fish a lot, because like I said, the level you see here, my level here is not the, uh, on my uh, on my PC it's a lot higher, it's like 50 something. So I fished all those lakes. Let me go back over here. So we got a bigger one there. Let me see if I can uh, drop anchor here. Let me go back. And because I'm getting out of position here pretty much. And I don't want to get out of position. And I drop the anchor so I don't get out pulled out of position. I'm bringing in the bigger ones from back here. Yeah, that's a couple of days ago. I was I was, uh, I was playing uh, one of the hunting games. We I was trying to get some some deers and this kind of stuff. Me and uh, Blue Six were joking around. Maybe it was time to get an RPG and use it on some of those bears and and deers out there because it was getting kind of pathetic you're out there shooting them and you shoot them and they don't go down you shot them with a high power rifle and they should go down it's like, no they don't go down and you should i mean i sh i don't know how many times i shot those things right in the right place i mean it's like right on the heart and still running around the marathon basically and uh we and me and blue six were joking around on the uh on the uh messengers talking about like maybe we should use an rpg on it or an ak-47 uh, these fish here, they're, we don't. We, uh, here's one thing about the fishing thing. Uh, I had some grand a grandfather. Actually, it was like a great grandfather. My father used to tell me stories about him. That uh, when things got really bad, they used dynamite. <laughs> they will find an area where there's a lot of fish and just drop a dynamite stick in there. Uh, they'll find a way. I guess to cold it. I don't know how it was, but they'll get a way to get a dynamite explosion, and all the fish will come up all screwed up but they end up getting fish hey it worked 
a dangerous thing to be using dynamite to go fishing. So I actually one time, uh, I had a I had a, a channel here on YouTube, and uh, and on the uh, fishing planet, the name was the uh, fish. I used to call myself fishing with dynamite. All right. And that's what I used to call it because my uh, great grandfather. Man, people use all kind of stuff to go fishing. Uh, get a couple of bites in there. Now things get kind of slow if you uh, aim at the liddies over here. Let me see where I'm at. Right around now, going mid, going to the uh, mid of the lake. I don't think you're gonna pull anything out. Uh, we'll see. Usually there's some liddies over there. I'm not in position at all for it. But there'll be some, uh, as the day goes on, some of the bigger pikes will start heading up. But the more, mostly they're going to be close to the shore. Here in the middle of the lake, I'm just experimenting with this. See what kind of a hit do I get, if I get any kind of hits here. I don't see it happening. Now, if you're over there on the dock, you can set up a couple of rods. And I think on this boat you can do it too. I never tried, but you can maybe you're able to set up like around three rods. Uh, you can do some fishing for pikes, and at the same time, from some other kind of species, use the different kind of rods. All right. Let me get, pick this up here. Yeah, we'll stick here with the bikes here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the lure, and I'm going to go over to the silver lure if I find it. Sewer, a silver uh, spoon here, and we'll use the silver spoon on here. See how it does. All right. If you cast off the lure a couple times and you don't get no hits, just change it over to something else. I haven't gotten anything on this one here yet. Not even a nibble on there. And the speed's kind of slow on it. I mean, not the right speed, but... It's not there, it looks like. Not for this lure. Now, there's a lot more fish you can catch, like I say, on this lake. You get those walleyes. Uh, the uh, the walleyes, uh, you can use different things for them. Bait and uh, lures on them. I don't think I have any of the right lures for the walleyes on right now. Right now the lures I have on is mainly for the pikes. This is the second time I use this right here now. If I cast it like a third time and, and I don't get, they don't seem to be interested in it, I just go to another lure. You gotta be changing lures once in a while, because uh, as the day moves on, sometimes the the lure the lure that was affected in the morning time won't be uh, affected later on. It gets kind of. I guess they get used to seeing it too many times out there, pulling their buddies out, and <laughs> so they stay away from it. Looks like that's not going to be the uh, that lure is not going to work out too good. Let me try another one here. All right, let's see what else I can get here. Now this mid uh, spoon, you may be able to get some of the uh, walleyes with that. So I'm going to try it. Now it's going to say it's too light for this rod. It might not even allow me to gas. We'll see. Alright, I was able to cast off on that. You see a lot of fish down there in the fish finder. You see all those fish down there? So there's fish here. Let's see if we can bring in one of those walleyes on this lure. Now, the uh, walleyes, I noticed they're more toward the uh, 
like the center of the lake. And it's almost like all over the place here. Now you can do a little trolling on here. I just had a bite on there. You can, uh, this is not the boat I would use for trolling on here. Uh, I have another one, it's like a raft. It's one of those inflatable ones, and uh, it's made for the trolling. You can go slower. It does a lot better than this one. You go out here to the center with this. And see if there's anything out there. Alright. Yeah, Blue Six, I, I see you riding out there, but I concentrate over here, man. <laughs> I got a little bite on there. Try to stop and go with it. I got another bite. Small bites, uh, it's. I wonder, I'm beginning to wonder if it's something new here on Fish Planet. Because they notice like little nipples, nibbles, and you know, like little bites here and there. And uh, usually those don't, you just get a strike. And I'm beginning to wonder if they had it, oh, they, they tweak the system a bit to make it a little bit more realistic. I mean, I'm okay with it. Uh, usually that's the way it is in real fishing. You're going to get the, uh, you know, you get the big predator fish comes in, wham, almost hits your, uh, hits your uh, lure or whatever you're fishing, you know, it could be even bait fish. And uh, think about big predator fish. Now, you, you know, like I say, I'm, I'm an experienced person when it comes to, f to fishing, real fishing, you know, out in the ocean, out ocean, lake fishing, all type of fishing. And the big fish, a lot of like big saltwater fish, uh, the big, uh, the the bigger the fish is, the more. Uh, oh man, no wonder. I was like, what the heck? This is like totally wrong here. It's moving at extremely fast speed here. I have it on the uh, wrong setting here. Say, so what is wrong with this thing? Um, the big fish, if you got a, if you observe, if you can, if you're in an area you have clear water, you can observe the fish. Just making making a move towards your hook. They're more like caution. So don't wait for the smaller fish to mess with it. And then the, it was almost like the fish is actually smart enough to figure it out that he's, he's going to have to wait to see what these other fishes if they get screwed. <laughs> and uh, and then he'll just wait back and then he'll see him make his move. And I seen fish go go around bait. Wow, this one's coming in here. Go around bait for almost like 30, 40 minutes, just going around a bait and not biting it. Oh, wait a minute. What is this thing? This has got to be a walleye. This guy, look at that. See him down there? That's a good sized fish. What the devil is this? Yeah, that's a walleye. There you go, you see? There you go. See, I told you I had the right uh, the lures for it. It's for walleye. And the good size one here, you got one that's over 3 pounds here, 20 inches. Alright, uh, paid $566. Let me see if you can see a better shot at it, so you guys can look at it. There you go. And that's the walleye. And as you can see, I used a different lure for that, for the walleye. Alright. And of course, I told you, if you go to the center of the lake, you're probably going to catch some of these walleyes. So we're going to keep that one. I don't know if I kept it. I'm going to try to get a couple more of these. Let me lower my... Uh, I want to bring down my drag on there. I always keep my drag around half. Maybe I'll get another one here. Get a Barbie going, a barbecue going there. Well, like I was talking about, if you're out in the ocean, uh, if you're uh, if you can assert, uh, observe the uh, fish, some of the big fish will will linger around a bait and won't bite it. They'll let the smaller ones bite it, and then in the at the right moment they'll come back and wham, they'll hit it, and uh. A lot of the like mango snappers, they'll do that, you know, redfish and stuff like that. There you go, there's another one right there. And walleyes to come in. I'll catch more of those. 
Uh, you guys see the what I'm using? I'm using the mid uh, spoon there, half pound. Even though the rod is a thick rod, this rod does. This uh, spoon that I'm using is actually, well, they will say it was too light for this rod, but you can still use it. See, so we get you see the the lake there. If you look at the map, I can't pull out the map now because I have the rod. But if you look at the map, this actually right here in the, in the middle is deep. And you see how long it's taken to get to the bottom. Sometimes, if you want the bigger fish, let it go down to the bottom. And uh, well, it's just about when it hits the bottom, start reel, reel or uh, ring it in, just reel it in. And uh, we got another one there, possibly another walleye. Yeah, it looks like the walleyes are back here on Emerald Lakes. There it is. There's another one right there. There you go. Another three pounder, and it pays pretty good. Uh, they pay uh, five hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Uh, XPs are like sixty-nine on that one. As long as they're biting, I'm gonna bring them in. All right. I'll let the uh, let us sink down a little bit, and then you can go ahead and bring them in. Stop doing the uh, stop and go action on there. But the walleyes are uh, really, they're like all over the place. Let me see if, uh, if there's any more on this side here. But I, I noticed that the bigger ones are towards the, the center of the lake. I got something on there, something small. It's coming, there he comes. Uh, it's just another pike there. A young northern pike. Alright. Yeah, the pikes will go on. To, pikes are usually really good with any kind of spoon. They do uh, pretty good with spoons. I'll check your commentary. Uh, let me uh, see if I catch another fish, and I'll look what you put on there. Cause I, I can, like I said, I see it, I see it pop up on uh, PlayStation that somebody left a commentary, but I think that's you, Blue Six. And then I'll look over there. See if I can give me another fish on here. No, uh, almost had him. I check my map to see if I'm at the peak. I don't think I'm at the peak. I think the peak was like around five o'clock. Hang on a second. Let me uh, check my map here for a second. Oh, we are at the peak. It's between, uh, I guess, between three and five. It's a peak. So that's why we're catching also a lot of uh, a lot of the fish here. Yeah, for these kind of fish, heat seeker. Now I think we have to probably use one of those uh, land, one of those uh, ocean mines, one of those big giant World War II mines. <laughs> you should definitely do some damage. You know, get one of those World War II type of mines in here. Yeah, it's uh, Blue Six leaving some commentary on the messenger. A couple of years ago, uh. When I used to play on my PC, uh, place of the uh, fishing planet, I had a couple people that would join on the game. I think here on this one you can have about four or five of your friends join. 
and we'll get it together and play a couple hours of it. That's pretty fun. Let me go back and see if I can get the wall lights again from here. Because we're at the, uh, it's now going down towards 3, past 3 now, on the game time. And this is supposed to be the peak. We'll let it sink down a little bit before I bring it in. So we're up to 33 pounds. You know, it's it's if you were like in uh, at the Blue Crab Island, this would be nothing. You know, it's a small fish. I mean, one fish like yesterday, I caught a tarpon that was 56 pounds. One fish could do it easy. Uh, yesterday I had around 220 pounds and I had a slow day. Normally, uh, there on Blue Crab uh, Blue Crab uh, Island. I will fill in a pin of 500 pounds. All right, and at the end of the day, I, will, I pretty much fill it in because you bring in some big fish here. Since you're bringing in small fish, you know you're not going to put in a lot of fish here. Here you go. See, this one here is two pounds, two almost two pounds and a half. And uh, XP is about 54. So you get bigger fish. That's why the uh, I always like fishing the uh, blue crab island because of the bigger fishes. Now there's a lot of interior fishing on that island that I don't get much much into because I, I like if I'm gonna do interior fishing like what I'm doing right here, I prefer to go out here like the Emerald Lakes and other lakes. Uh, you also got that Moose Lake. Moose Lake is pretty good. Uh, you get a lot, a lot of fish. There used to be a lot of Iron Heads and Moose Lake, uh, Moose Lake, but I think maybe they might have got that one wrong. All I know is they uh, pretty much took them out, and you won't find those there anymore. And the iron heads were moved over to uh, the California. Uh, I forgot the name of that one there in California Lake, and that one had the start getting, getting you start getting a lot of iron uh, iron heads there. But Moose Lake, uh, Moose Lake, when they first started to put those iron uh, iron heads in there, there were like a lot of them there. And I maybe they might. I, I'm not. I'm not sure about them. Um, they, they. I haven't read anything on it. But maybe the species was not right for that lake, and maybe that's why they pulled it up. That's why you won't find the iron heads no more there in Moose Lake, because Moose uh, Lake is actually in Canada, and uh, that may have just been the wrong species. Maybe somebody say, you know, that's the wrong species for this lake or something. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of like thinking to myself that could have been the reason why. But that was a, that's another one of those spots that I go out a lot. It's Moose Lake. I always enjoy it. Right now, I'm not. I'm, I don't even know if I'm qualified to go to Moose Lake. Uh, on PC, I can do it, but not on this game. Not on the uh, PlayStation because I just had to read. I this game basically I put it new in here. And uh, that's, I got a bike there. I was right up to the boat, and he pulled into the boat. Let me change the lure. The lure's getting kind of late on me. Let's see if I go. Let me go with the. Uh, let me try the red. This one is actually a nighttime. It's supposed to be a night lure. This red uh, spoon. But um, I always try different things. Even though it's not recommended for the species, sometimes I'll try something different. And it works out. Uh, I've actually used the nighttime lures in some of the places in here actually some of like in the Rockies I've used the nighttime lures done great now here's another thing I've actually used the nighttime the lure that's meant for nighttime I actually use it at nighttime and it hasn't done that great now I don't have a I don't have the night gear like the uh the little uh flash helmet you could say flashlight helmet I don't have that. Oh, I got this pike right here with us. Not bad. Small pike. Let me try the pikes. Maybe they're interested in this lure. So I gotta see if I somehow get the uh, night. Fl the the helmet that has to have a little flashlight on it, so I can do some nighttime fishing. Cause I don't have that. That's one thing I don't have. 
And I didn't want to use all my uh, the play money that you have here to buy that helmet. It's kind of expensive, and it, I think it can be used. The play money can be used on something better. Yeah. Here we got another hit here. Let me see. Now that's supposed to be a nighttime lure, that red lure, but it's done okay here. I keep casting it. It seems to be uh, red on one side and silver on the other side. Yeah, sorry, Blue Six. I'm not looking uh, much at the uh, at the messenger because I'm concentrating on my fishing. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of almost out of the water there. Yeah, once your lure's out of the water, it's like, yeah, they're gonna catch you. Yeah. And this lure is definitely a light lure. Uh, it's a quarter ounce. It's a quarter ounce lure. You should be using at least uh, three-quarter ounce lures on this rod. I believe that's the the minimum. And this is an extreme light lure for this rod. Had a bite. Then you got that Luciana one out there. The it's pretty good. The Luciana one has the uh, has the big uh, catfish, and they got a couple other good fishes in there. And uh, I'll be doing different missions out here so you guys can see. You know what happens with some of these lures that you normally don't use? You get a couple of strikes on them, and then I guess the game realizes, hey, you're using the wrong lure, not the lure that we normally use here. And you'll stop getting strikes on them. You just got a strike on there. Let me try back here in the deeper water. Maybe we'll get some of these walleyes to come up, back up here. So far today, we got around five walleyes, so not bad. But right now, we're heading down the peak here. I'll let the lure go down to the bottom a little bit here thing is this is a light lure so I can't cast it off too far what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to another lure which is a nighttime lure it's actually a mid spoon and it it's done good with me almost anywhere I put it that thing catches just about anywhere you throw it you'll bring in something so I'll switch over to that lure right after this one here let's see how it does here uh, right at the moment that fish came at it, didn't get it. Let me switch over to this one lure that I'm always using. It's a nighttime lure. It's actually a, a spoon is what it is. And uh, it does pretty good. Just about. And this is the this is actually the right size for this rod. Let's see if we can get ourselves a couple more walleyes out here. We'll try these. Uh, the, uh, the thing I like about the Emerald Lakes is how nice it looks. It looks really nice. It really did a good job with the ambience and the uh, the looks of the lake. See, right away I got hit on it. Uh, this is a lure you use at supposed to be using at night, but I always I use it at any time because I've had so much good luck with it. That just about any time I'll use this lure. But I got the speed on it too slow because I had to set it up for a quarter. Let me get a little speed up on this. My speed is too slow on there. I caught all kind of fish with this lure. Maybe I have to speed a little bit too high. Let me see. We'll cast down there again. What was that? Some update or something. Okay. I'll let it sink down a little bit. And we'll start dragging it in. And stop and go action, people. Stop and go action. So we got a lot of pikes uh, earlier on. And then we got the wall lights. 
pikes are still pikes are going to start i think right now as the uh, as the sun begins to set you're going to start getting some more pikes here there we go something just hit me there that's probably a walleye all uh, right something just hit the lure Let me try here on this side, see if we can get the uh, pikes going here. Mainly the pikes are on this side. You'll have some walleyes on this side. Remember the water here is more shallow than that, so you don't have to let it go down that much. Yeah, I had a strike on it, but... I'll slow it down because I think I'm going way too fast with it. There you go, we got something on it. That is a pike. There's a small pike. We'll see, we'll try it a couple more times. Almost had him, almost had him. I right, switch over to the uh, other one. the other lure. I've had luck with this one. Uh, sometimes on this leg is okay and nighttime is done okay. Let me uh, change over the lure to the uh, you know I've not tried the uh, the mid popper. Let me try one of those and see what it does. Get the blue one here. Oh uh, it says the tackle is too heavy. If I put this on there it's it could break the tip of the rod, uh, and I've uh, I've done that before where I've broken the tip on the rod, actually ruined the rod, and had to go buy another rod. I'm just trying to see what other tackle I brought here for this. I'm gonna go back to the uh, gold spoon because it does really good here in the afternoon. It's lighter than what the ro what the rod requires, but it's still it's still able to get a good cast out there. So that was kind of a bad cast, but good enough for this area. What you gotta do is you gotta put it because I have the uh motors strong motor so I bring it down to one almost. Yeah I didn't do a there he goes. Oh right there towards the end there he came in. There you go. It's a little bit over a pound there, not too shabby. And like I said, the uh, you can actually get a, a a less stronger rod, you can say, a weaker rod, and a weaker motor, you can say, and, uh, and it will meet the requirements for it, and you have a longer cast on it. But I'm usually set up to do fishing over there at the. Uh, Bluegill Island. I'm usually take the stronger rods with me, so this, this was set up for that. I'm letting it go down a little bit because I kind of brought it up a little high. I look behind me if I got any splashes back here. Maybe I'll cast off this way because sometimes they'll, they'll start m moving this. I see right behind me there's some splashes. So I may have to move the boat because I've actually had the boat anchor. And I'm in the area where they're like, this is the area they're in. Like, I'm in the area I should be casting to, not sitting on top of.
So I'm going to get back on the boat, pull the anchor up, and reposition myself. Because this is in the afternoon, you're going to get a lot of action right here. I'll just reposition myself, get the anchor up. Okay. Let me just turn the boat around. What happened? I thought I started the engine. Yeah. Let me turn around. You see all the fish there? Look at fish finder, what he found. I'm telling you, the uh, the boat, it's a, it's a good investment, I think, for this game. I've always had fun with the boat. And this one with the fish finder and the electrical motor in front, um, it's a win. This boat does a lot of good stuff. The other thing about this boat and this side of the lake, it's, it's just big, all right? And uh, maybe better off just using a canoe or one of the inflatable, inflatable uh, raft of boats. I'm almost going to the dock here because this is where the uh, where the action is really going to be at. Uh, actually, casting right off the edge of the dock there. So as soon as I get close enough, I'll just drop anchor here. All right, right around here. All right, let me go back here. I'm too close there. And let me get myself a little position, a little bit better right around here. You see one of my markers where is that? Believe it or not, that's what caught some big fish there. Right around here is good. Let me, uh... Hang on a second. Let me just drop anchor right there. And you get a lot of the pikes in here. See the pikes already jumping there. You're not going to get a really far cast on this rod, but well, it is kind of a lake that's not that big. I just cast towards them weeds better, because I kind of cast it towards the center here. And uh, here used to be a hot spot for the, for the walleyes. Used to catch a lot of walleyes here. Uh, he just hit it towards the end there. See if I don't hit the uh, weeds over there. Oh, that's a good spot there. Let it go down a little bit. Thing is, when you complete the uh, all the spots on the game, then you kind of I, I enjoy it better because then I can go back with, and I'm not trying to gain anything. I'm just trying to fish, just having a fishing you know fishing experience. You say I'm not trying to to gain points or whatever you know be able to go up to another level. I'm kind of just enjoying the the area, enjoying the fishing. I wish here on PlayStation I had all the spots have been it would just be going to anywhere I want to go, you know, <laughs> without worry about, you know, levels or whatever the deal is. Here's one coming in here, pretty good size fish. There you go, that actually is a record. A four pounder. There you go, four pounder. I think that's might be the biggest. Uh you get you get here I think it's uh six pound, five pound, maybe six might be the biggest on here. I said eight early, but I think it's smaller. You're getting bigger at the uh at the St. Cloud. You'll get bigger pikes over there. And you also got some pikes over at the uh, Moose Lakes. You'll get some pikes. And then the Alaskan one also has pikes. And those the ones in Alaska are bigger. I guess I have another one in there. Oh, got a hit on him, but lost him. 
See, I'm still sticking with the the ghost boom that I came that I started out the game with because usually I had a lot of luck with the ghost boom towards the uh, when the sun starts dropping here on Moose on the uh, Emerald Lakes. Let us sink down a little bit and stop and go motion. There you go. We got another one here. One after another. Okay, grassy bike there. up another one here. Yeah, right now game time here. I'm talking about game time. Uh, it's uh, almost 4.30. It's not in the peak, but you still should be, you still should be able to get some of the pikes. Like I said, if you had a uh, a rod that wasn't as strong as this one with the line that strong, and the same thing with the motor, you could cast off a lot further. All right, you may have a little problem with if it's a big fish, but kind of got to balance it off. I just had a bite on there, but it didn't go. I get those weeds. Over there. I want to hit the weeds. Just want to get close to them. Just yeah, that's too. All right, there you go. Had a bite right there. There you go. It's a little yellow, yellow perch there. A little yellow perch. Some of the small bites you're getting might be the yellow perch. I just had a bite on the far yellow perch. There you go, that's what we got here. A small yellow, this young uh, northern pike. That pike is like bigger ones seem to be out further, out there. So another one going there. Make a big splash there. Oh, I had him. I thought I had him. Let me get him a little bit closer. Watch I don't go into the weeds here. Let it go down, almost down to the bottom. The best thing you do is you take your canoe or your boat and uh, you park it over there where that marker is at, where I put that marker at, around there, and you fish just along the line there. I'm tempting to do that, but I'm okay. So far today, I'm about 47 pounds on here. And I could have caught more, but I'm mo mainly after the pikes. Put these in higher. As the sun goes down, I think around five something we'll get the uh, five or six. We get this bullfrog. <laughs> right now you just got the ambience from the uh, from the uh, get the 
birds here. Just like this. You don't hear nothing else, just that. He's right there at the last moment, he was right there. The occasional wasp or <laughs> whatever flying close to you. Dragonflies. I'm seeing the dragonflies out there. Eh, what if they still in the game? Because it was pretty interesting. The dragonflies would come and land on your rod. And they'll fly around you. I get maybe people got scared of them. <laughs> Somebody might have complained about it. I don't know. There you go. That's a good one there. There you go. That's almost uh, three and a half pounds. A little bit over three and a half pounds. Up another one out here. So we're up to about 50 pounds right now. And if you hit the Alaskan one, the uh, fishing in Alaska, it's uh, you get some really big fish there, big salmons and all this kind of stuff out there, and, and you'll get some big bucks there. Same thing with the uh, blue crab. Island, you can uh, if you're able to get some of the tar tarpons in there, you can really rack up for some money there. And I went there on tarpons. There we go. Another one coming in. And that is another young uh, northern pike. It wasn't a big one. Yeah, this time this is where they're at. This area, a lot of pikes. Yeah, another hit on there, but lost them. Big splash out there in the distance. Get out a little bit more out this way. Now you can fish off the dock here and do pretty good. I mean, it's good to have the canoe and the uh, inflatable. Me, I got a boat that's possibly too big for this lake, but I can still have some fun out here. Before the sun goes down, we're about five o'clock here on game time. What I might do is might end up going to the dock. I don't know if I'm gonna have to reset my boat here. Let me see where I'm at here. Because I'm right next to the dock. Well, actually, further south, closer than that. And let me go to the back here. And uh, pull the anchor up. 
what I'll do is I'm going to move the boat, position it a little bit better. And we're going to be fishing along this edge here. Where the, where the uh, trees here, the, uh, it looks almost like cattails. And we're fishing in that direction right there. Now there's a couple of catfish you can get out here. If you get close to the uh, weeds here, you get some of the catfish. Actually, too close to the weeds here. I'm beginning to go into like a little hole there. What I want to do is get more towards... It's a good thing about this boat. It has that one electrical motor there that can get you around, position you better. That's why I want to be right here. See all the fish down there. You see it on the fish finder. smaller fish but good enough continue with that fish here there you go there's another one right there and what do we got here there you go grasp yeah, it's smaller fish but Filling in that pin. Filling in that pin. Yeah, that's a good spot right there where I just cast. Oh, I had a strike on there, but uh Yeah, you won't hear me call out fish fish on party. <laughs> I barely ever say that. I don't as somebody who's fish as a professional fisherman and done sports fishing. I've never heard anybody say it. Only on those party boats that you that call them party boats, so or you can go and uh people go there like tourists that don't have a boat. And they come from, uh, let's, I, cause I used to live in the Florida Keys and I've been living in Florida for most of my life. And a lot of, I know a lot of real, done commercial fishing and, and I've done also uh, sport fishing. And, uh, you know, the only time I heard that, is I think possibly in one of those party boats where people say, hey, fish on. <laughs> you know, mostly, hey, I caught one, you know, I got one. That's what I normally will hear, you know. Maybe some new trend or something to people. I don't think I've ever heard any professional fishermen say, Hey, fish on! Sounds so California-like. <laughs> Not twins. I'm just joking around. No, it's a blue 60s from California. I'm messing with them. No, it's okay. You guys can pretty much say anything you want about fish. Fish on, fish off, whatever. There's a good-sized fish right there. There you go. A record going on that one. And that's for that for that uh, for that fish. We'll take a little snapshot on there of this one here, so you guys see what I caught. I mean, it's not a, it's, of course, it's not a big fish. It's just the kind of fish it is. Hey, we're underwater here, looking up there. This guy, the guy, this guy's got himself a heck of something. And for some reason, he's got those boots on. And I don't remember those boots on there. I may have to change him around. All right, so he's let me put him to the sun here because I can't see him that good. There you go, see that? Right. I will get that, we'll keep that one there. Little trophy there. Little trophy fish. So we're up to about 57 pounds here. There you go, there's another one right here.
And there you go. There's almost two pounds right there. Uh, that bike there. I keep that one there. Oh, got a good strike on that. If you see, uh, if you see later on when this thing, or you should see it, you'll you see the names that I put the kind of fishes that I caught here for this video. Another one there, mostly pikes. Did caught some walleyes. And I think there was another species we caught. Mostly walleye, uh, the uh, pikes in the, uh, and then a couple of the uh, walleyes. I've actually not tried this lure too much on the walleyes. Let me give it a, a little, you can say, like the British, oh, give it a go. <laughs> Right at the last moment there, I was about to pull the rod out. The walleyes are a lot of times they're here toward the center. And the water is a lot deeper. You see how long it takes the lure to get down there. So there's some couple of holes here for catfish. You might be able to catch some catfish here. I think there's some catfish here. Never tried. I don't think I ever tried this lure for the walleyes. I'm not sure. I tried the other lure, which is like a nighttime lure. Yeah, it's not even a, not even a nibble on them. So let me continue here to try to get northern pikes. Get some more of these pikes out here. Like I said, if you go out there to the uh, Saint Cloud. Uh, the Michigan Lake. I've actually been on that lake, and uh, there's an area there you can actually catch some bigger pikes. And over at uh, at Moose Lake, there's an area you can catch bigger pikes. All right, there you go. We got some another one there. Yeah, Moose Lake's got the pikes, nice uh, size pikes. And uh, that Michigan Lake's got some nice size pikes there. There you go. Smaller one. we can get in there. Think about fishing is relaxing. Sit there, bring a couple of cold beers. Uh, and you can just sit there do some fishing. And also sometimes fishing it depends on the person you go with. Like let's say if you go by yourself, yeah you'd be okay. But if you can go fishing with somebody who's not just you know talking every 20 seconds you can see now I'm doing a lot of talking here because you know I'm doing the video <laughs> but normally I would just sit out there me and my friend well some friends of ours and everybody kind of gets into all, their own little wool in their mind I guess <laughs> they do their fishing and you know we'll drink some beer we'll get concentrated into the fishing and uh, you just sit there in your little lawn chair whatever you brought to sit down and watch your rods Time slows down, you can say. If it's a day that you don't have a lot of mosquitoes, or it's too, or it's too hot, or it's, you can have a really a nice time. It's kind of like a jacuzzi for your brains. <laughs> this is what fishing is. 
It kind of helps relax your brains. If it's, if you got a lot of stuff on your mind, fishing can times sometimes pull out of that out of your head. And it's like a uh, basically like a jacuzzi for your brains. We got another hit here. We didn't get that. Yeah, trying it a couple times. Didn't get no hit. Maybe it's time to change that lure. We're now at the uh, almost six o'clock game time here. Had another hit right there, but did not. Didn't take the whole fish. Didn't, uh, didn't bite all the way. Couple fishes down there. See the uh, fish finder down there. You can see the fish finder. See the uh, fish finder. Look at the fish down there. Some walleyes possibly on there. Yeah, I think fish finders. If you get a good fish finder, it's the investment is it's kind of worth it because you don't waste a lot of money on uh, on fuel and searching for fish. A fish finder. If you know how to use it, you can really do good with it. But there's some cheap fish finders out there, uh, you know, bad quality fish finders that give you a lot of false returns and, and uh, you know, you drop anchor and uh, you try to get some fish and realize there's really nothing there All right, and uh, can cost you money and time. If you're somebody from up north and you, you may be paying rent on a boat somewhere in Florida or something like that, you know, just to keep it in a warehouse or keep it uh, on a dock. It's expensive. And the last thing you want to do is show up on your vacation. Maybe you get a three-week vacation, two-week vacation, and your fish finder spends most of the time wasting your time. You know, you invest a lot of money on your boat and uh, on your fish finders, I mean, on your equipment for your boat. Try to get good equipment. You know, especially if you're paying a lot of rent. Some people are lucky. They'll know somebody that has a, a, a house on a canal, you know, that leads out to the ocean. And they're able to put their boat there for the entire time they're living up north. And their friends, maybe they'll give some money to their friends to keep their boat. Maybe their friend doesn't own the boat and they'll just give them some money to keep the boat there. You know, but a lot of other people they just have to they'll have to rent and uh rent a location to keep their boat and keep it on dry storage or keep it on a keep it on a on a canal on somebody's dock or something and that's gonna cost big bucks it can cost you a lot of money also the area you're in uh if you're like in an area like in the keys will cost you cost you nice money there. If you're maybe in another location where there's not a lot of fishing, but you can still put it on the dock, it would be less. Boats can be quite expensive to to keep. Now you can put the boat on the back of your trader and if you're living up north you can haul it all the way down to Florida if you want to do some fishing. And uh, you have to have of course the right trucks and and the equipment that you need to bring in. And if I was like a multi-millionaire, I would have myself a nice house right there in a nice area in mid in uh, Florida. Access, we'll have a canal access to the uh, to the ocean. Keep me a nice boat with all the latest equipment on there. And uh, just do fishing. And it's great to go out with family and stuff. I mean, and go out there to the ocean, spend a whole day doing some fishing, just hanging out. And there's times you go out to the ocean and you might go to a spot that you won't catch too much fish, but the trip itself becomes a good experience, even if you didn't catch much uh, fish. Yeah, it's always all you know. It's a it's a great plus when you go fishing. You get a lot of fish. 
and you're fishing and you're happy and but still, you know, you you go out there, maybe you caught, you caught only a couple of fish, but if you're out there with family and you're, you know, just having a good time, eh, you maybe didn't catch too many fish, but you still had a good family time, and and uh, it's a good activity to get around people and just shoot the bull, I guess, <laughs> you know, but uh, it's good for everybody. It was a good fishing there. Yeah, I've done, I've done a lot of ocean, more ocean fishing than lake fishing or canal fishing, definitely. And commercial fishing, I've, it's been ocean fishing and not any uh, lake fishing, it's just ocean fishing. Well, I've met a lot of people that's never been fishing in their entire life. And it's thing about fishing is you got it or don't got it. I mean, you either you hate it or love it. <laughs> you know, so the thing about fishing, uh, there's people that you, you'll take out fishing, they've never been fishing, and you take them they're bored out of their mind. You know, is this what you really do out here in the week? I've got better things to do. It's just, they don't get it. Fishing is about relaxing. Uh, and just uh, getting together with nature, I guess. <laughs> Get together with God. It's a good time to 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 open your mind up to a lot of things and think things over. And they just don't get that part. They go out fishing. And they uh, they want to get a fish on the hook right away, and they want to bring it. You know, they want to be a top sports fisherman overnight. You can say, and uh, they just don't get the experience of fishing. And there are people that fishing is their stuff. That's the only thing they want to do when they get out of get out of their work or they get on their vacation. And uh, sometimes the wives don't get it. <laughs> I met a couple of people in my life where their wife were not into that fishing stuff, and uh, they have had some problems with their relationships. You with the guy, you know, he has a three week vacation. Yeah, he's a top executive for some company. But he's always fishing. He gets a vacation, he goes fishing instead of, uh... And that's what he does. He's not, like, out cheating with his wife. That's what he's doing. He's fishing. It's just he enjoys it. But the wife wants some time for herself. You know, she wants to do things on her vacation. And fishing is not on her mind. Uh, you know, so... Uh, you know, maybe a wife will go out to, with you to the Florida Keys or somewhere to Florida and enjoy the fish, the, uh the beach and all that but she's there by herself and you're out there in the ocean fishing it kind of takes out what she really was looking for the best thing is to find a wife that likes fishing <laughs> and I'm, I know I've met people like that where they, their wife likes fishing and, and they like fishing so they get along great and it's I think they'll probably be together for 3,000 years <laughs> you know, that's the way it is And, you know, they're out there, they go to uh, some of these stores, like Walmarts and places where you'll see some of this fishing gear, and they'll be like, look, I don't get this, we should get that, we need that. And it's like they're shopping together for fishing gear, you know. So that's, but, you know, there are women out there, they love fishing. Uh, they look to go fishing, just as much as men do. Uh, the other thing about women going out fishing, it can kind of be scary and intimidating to go out fishing by yourself if you're a woman with all this with all these weirdos out there and all this craziness you know and nowadays even for men going fishing by yourself it can get kind of dangerous depending on what part of the country you're in better to go with a little group of people and enjoy the time I mean I like to go you know I like to go with couple of people, maybe one or two people, and at least, well, when fishing gets kind of slow, you talk to a couple, talk a little bit of bull, you could say, and drink some beer, and then just go on fishing. The people that I don't enjoy going fishing with are those kind of people, they're just sitting, looking at you, waiting for you to get done so they can leave. <laughs> they get on my nerves. So we got fishing, so now what? How long are we going to be here? 
You know, saying, you know, you're not catching anything. You should leave. And uh, they get on your nerves. They really get on your nerves. They don't get it. Uh, you know. I caught quite a mess of fish. Right now, up to 73 pounds, and it's like 6:30 right now here. A lot of the uh, fishes are buying. So those are the kind that you, when you go fishing, you like they take the spirit out of the fishing out of you. You know, like you just, you just want to get back in your car and say, "Heck with it, let me get out of here." You know, they don't get it that sometimes you're gonna have to wait for the fish to strike. It's not like one after another. You get lucky, maybe you hit a good spot, but there are days there you might go to your favorite spot and there's nothing there, and there are times you go back into and you catch all kind of fish. There's another one here. Pikes after pikes after pikes there. No one pike. Mm -hmm. Or keep on bringing them in. Oh yeah. See if he gets a couple more out here. And if you're somebody who likes to have a couple of cold ones or beer or whatever, you go fishing, eh, you know, it's be careful with the driving part, you know, it can be dangerous for you and somebody else. If you like to have a couple of cold ones, find somebody that doesn't drink, you know, doesn't drink a lot. And if they like fishing, it's even better. You know, that way you enjoy your experience and have a couple cold beers and keep yourself out of trouble. You know what I mean? And some people go out the, uh, some of these lakes and stuff and rivers and they'll go camping and, uh, they'll do some fishing and camping. Good thing about a boat, if you're in the right place, you can, uh, go out there and if, if the, uh, weather permits it and you're not having crazy weather or anything like that, and you have a nice sized boat you can fish the entire night and if you got like a good cabin and sleeping area you know crash out out there had a couple of drinks crash out and you're okay just make sure you don't crash out turn off all the lights in your boat and then <laughs> you may end up with a big surprise somebody wrecking into your boat uh, especially if you're like in Florida where you have where you're out there in the uh, Gulf Stream you gotta be extremely careful there you got a lot of those heavy ships out there they got radars on their ship but you never know when things could go wrong you get slammed by somebody make sure you have your lights on some light on some where people know where you're at and uh don't just go tearing off everything I think. you probably turn off everything you're probably gonna get some um, some uh some visits from the authority. You know, you're supposed to have some kind of light on there. And you get yourself, you know, like Coast Car or or the uh, one of the you know, the you know patrols out there coming, a police patrol out there, Marine Patrol. You are if you're if you got a boat. And you don't have the proper gear on there, and they're not in a good move. <laughs> they're gonna ticket you for everything that you're missing. So make sure you got the the proper amount of lifesavers, you know, and and you got the proper gear that you're supposed to have. What they require by law, because you could really they could really find a living yang yang out of you for not having this stuff flares, fire extinguishers, everything. Some of this stuff's got to be in the right location, too. You know, they're just doing their job, people. You know, they're not the bad guys. They're out there to protect you, and a lot of people go out to the sea thinking that there's no big sea. They're going out to the ocean, i tell you, that's one of the most dangerous things you can do if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you can get yourself in trouble right away. Uh, I've seen people out there going out to the ocean and on a boat that's like 23 feet. On a calm day, you'll probably be okay, but if you, if it gets rough out there all of a sudden, you're going to be in trouble. You know? And also, people go out there in the ocean, no fire distinguisher, no radio, no kind of, not even flares, nothing. And if the boat, something happens, starts getting water, it's only going to be you and the sharks. 
<laughs> you know, you're going to be finding yourself maybe floating out there in the uh, ocean. And if you didn't bring life preserved, uh, you know, vessel or something like that, you're going to be in big trouble. You're basically going to become shark food. You know? But there ain't no joke. Sharks are no joke. Uh, especially if you're over a reef, there's always sharks on the reef. Main, a lot of times there'll be sharks over the reef. You know, if something happens and you have to go in the water, you may not like it. You know. Let's always keep the proper amount of gear in your boat. And uh, if you're not sure about the gear you have to carry or the safety gear and and you want to stay within the law, you know, go to the uh, Marine Patrol's office or uh, contact the Coast Guard. And they'll point you in the right direction where to get the information. And uh, there are safety courses sometimes they will provide that you can take. And I would recommend people that don't know the ocean a lot, never been around, I would recommend you take some of the safety courses. And uh, you have to need some. You have to understand about navigation too, and the rule of navigations, the rule of the, uh, you know, coming into a into docks and stuff like that. There we go, we got evening falling here. We're almost at 7 o'clock here on game time. You can see a little bit of myth, mist developing over here with like... And it's been pike at the pike at the pike. Right now we're at 75 pounds here. Uh, they seem to have slowed down. Oh, here we go. Got another one. Oh, I had another one right there. That might have been a walleye. That actually might have been a walleye. That might not, not have been a pike. The way he's hit that could have been a walleye. So that's why I find interesting interesting about the game here. This is, like I say, one of the best, if not the best simulator you can get for fishing. And they even get you like the strikes on the fishing rod will be sim will be a little different from f species to species. At least that's the way it feels like. So maybe one day they're gonna make uh, f one that has to do with fishing out in the ocean, but it's way more complicated because of depth. The depth of the ocean and lakes and streams are way different than what you're going to find, of course, in the ocean. And uh, I think they're trying to figure that one out. Some some games have attempted to make, and there's a couple of good ones out there, fishing out in the ocean. But it seems like they struggle with the depth because the fish move from different depth uh, depending on temperature, water temperature. And... Uh, a lot of the sports fishermen are not going to be fishing way out in the ocean unless they're fishing for sailfish and marlins and this kind of stuff. A tuna. But for the uh, simple, you could say, guy that wants to go fishing in Florida, they want to go possibly to the reef and areas like that. So it's, the water is still deep and not that deep. and You can still catch a lot of fish there, a lot of reef fish. And I have, still have, have a good time. But if you start going out there for tuna and marlins and all this kind of stuff, sailfish, and then you're gonna, you know, you gotta know a little bit more what you're doing, and uh, you're dealing with different kind of waters there, and you got to look for signs and where the fish could be at. You're looking for surface activity, birds, <laughs> all kind of things that could indicate good fish finder always helps. So I may I'm actually using this one here on the deeper side, so I'm just experimenting a little bit with it. See if it's any of the uh, bigger uh, fish out here on this side. Now walleyes are going to be there, so I may be changing over the lower. Over here at the uh, on this side, the pikes seem to be thinning out, and that's because we're getting closer here tonight. But believe it or not, this is about the time that a lot of these pikes will bite. Uh, normal conditions, you say, out. Real world scenario. But, uh, temperature of the water here, priorities, uh, going in a different direction here, and pikes are not going to be biting that much, I say. 
not much going on. I'm going to change the lure and see if I can get a couple of wall lights there. And I'll go to this one that I use. It's like a nighttime lure. Not a nighttime lure. It's a this one here is not a it's a mid spoon is what it is. It's very light for this rod, but still you get some strikes in it. And you see it goes quite a distance for being it's a half a ounce. Uh this rod I think the minimum is uh uh three four ounces. Three fourth ounces or possibly maybe uh two ounce. Let's see if I get the hits on the wall lights here. And gotta get them hits on the wall lights. Now, I remember one time I had good luck using the uh, glow worm, there was a glow worm you can use in uh, catching walleyes. I'm not sure here if it's doing that okay at night. I haven't fished here in nighttime in a long time at the uh, not even a hit on there. Let me try on this side. Earlier today was a I did okay with this uh, lure. I'll let it go down a little bit. But we are off the uh, peak of the fishing here. Peak was around 3 o'clock, and we're at right now at 7. So we're, I guarantee we're nowhere near, we're not at peak now. I still see some fish there on the uh, fish finder, but not as, oh, let's see a couple there. You got a bite there? Let's see what we got there. So it just it feels like a walleye. Yeah, that's what it is. See what I mean about the feel of fish is different. Uh, you you get a f the, they have done really super good job here. You're just not pulling fish out. No, you have a feel to the if you especially if you're on the PlayStation, where the thing bright breaks or it doesn't bright break, you get a feel for it. Uh, you can almost tell the difference between the species of the fish you're catching. This is in real life it'll be like that. Uh, you'll see fishermen's calling out the fish they caught before they even bring it in. They'll tell you this is this guy. And if they're really good, they can tell you a lot about the fish. And, and you may think they got a big fish, and they'll tell you right off the bat, that's not a fish. That's not. That's actually a shark. Was what I, and even though the fish hasn't come up to the surface, or the shark hasn't come up to the surface, they'll tell you that's a shark, or it could be a stingray, or it could be something else. So, and this is what they try to capture here on a, on a, on Fish Plan. I, they have done a really good, super job on that. All right, so we got one of a pretty good sized walleye there. Probably get a couple more with this. Let's see what else we can get here. Yeah, I used to remember when I was a kid, there used to be these programs, like on Saturdays or Sundays, I'm not sure. It was one of those uh, weekends, and early in the morning they'll have some some fishing shows you know I'm a little it's a little different with me when it comes to fishing shows sometimes I'll I'll watch them uh, and there used to be a there's a channel out there that I I'm not able to see I only I only seen it when I when I worked overseas or lived overseas you know, it's supposed to be an Italian channel uh, that the uh, that has a fishing channel it's a each channel is on like 24 hours a day I don't know if they still have it but uh, a couple of years ago they had it and it was really interesting. Anytime you want, you can watch the video. Yeah, look at this, a record right here. We're talking about a record right here for this lake. Uh, actually, I call them bigger. Like I said, on PC, I call them possibly bigger. But here, you guys, it's almost 5 pounds and uh, 23 inches and uh, a little bit over 20, 23 inches, 135 XPs and uh, eight, uh, $814 for that one. Uh, this 
Let's see if we can get a picture and see what it looks like here. Ah, good sized fish. Let me put you towards the sun here. There you go. You proud of yourself? <laughs> this guy don't talk much back. But he has probably caught himself that fish. There you go. The action on the fish could do a little better. They could actually work that one out in the imitation on that. It just looks like... This. I mean, it's okay, but it could do a little better on that. But uh, it's overall really good. Good size fish. Yeah. There you go. I'm trying to fix the camera here for you. Okay. So we got that one there. Alright, keeper there. As you can see, the I'm using a different, the uh, spoon is different, and this is attracting more of the walleyes and, uh, than it is the pikes. Well, like I said, there was the, uh, there's an Italian channel. Um, I haven't seen it in quite a while, but uh, a couple of years ago, they I used to watch it quite often. When I was over, I did some overseas work, and it was uh, interesting. Now I understand a little bit of Italian, so um, I could understand a lot of this, a lot of stuff they were talking about. Not a lot of it, but I could understand some of it. Do you think? And uh, it was, it was a pretty good show. And most of their fishing was like lake fishing, uh, canal fishing, tournaments that they they show. There wasn't a lot of ocean fishing, and I don't mind because I like. I think I like a lot of the uh, canal fishing. It was pretty nice. And Italians seem to be, from what I can tell, a lot of them are into fishing. A lot of these people. And uh, when you have a fishing show that's on 24 hours, you you know that country's got to be into fishing. <laughs> you know, and uh, they also got some good boat channels. Uh, they talk about boats 24 hours, and and these beautiful freaking yachts. I'm talking about the things are huge. Basically, it's a mansion on on the ocean is what you got. It's it's like taking a mansion and putting it out in the ocean, and uh, it's just a great looking great looking boats. I'm telling you, super nice boats. If you guys ever become millionaires out there? That's be something to look into. Those those uh, great looking yachts and get go anytime you put some fuel and water got all the supplies you need a lot of, some of those yachts actually they actually make their own water their own drinking water uh, they got I believe it's reverse osmosis on the uh, on the boat that processed the water and got fuel some food you got the water you can go out there and and uh, really have a nice trip for a couple of weeks with your family and you don't have to stay in hotels or anything like that you pull into a dock and rent a place for a couple of nights and uh... you have luxury you have a... you're basically uh, moving a, a mansion around <laughs> it's what it is and if you got a good crew on there you know you can have a really nice time with the and you, it's not even about fishing, you know, you got some of these, some of these, uh, big, uh, luxury ships will have, you know, wave runners, and, uh, all other kind of stuff that you can, all other kind of activities you can do on it, and, uh, it's just great. Well, maybe I'll win the lottery one day. <laughs> Get a big, if I win the lottery, I think I'll be on one of those boats. I don't think I'll be on a... I don't think I'll be living on one of the, uh, on land. The other thing about that is, of course, if, uh, if you're, like, in Florida, you got hurricanes, and a lot of times what they do is these, these big boats, they'll move, uh, they'll move them inside the, uh, like, to right to move them inland. But, uh, you know, you, a lot of these boats are, are insured from, for the price of the boat, man, they, they got a lot of insurance on them. But still, you don't want that boat being damaged. And if you got enough time, a hurricane is heading your way. You know, a hurricane, potential hurricane, you could head out to sea or a different direction. They could be safe and find a safe harbor for the boat. There you go, we got another one coming in. 
It's uh, you know you don't do that for a house, but you'll do that possibly for a boat. You know, especially you got these boats out there. You know, worth you know several million dollars. There you go. That's supposed to be another record there, another trophy there. And we're here at seven forty-four now. Seven forty-four. And there were a couple of people that had those big sailboats, and they, uh, they sing as they say. I knew a couple of these people, uh, uh, I knew this one executive guy, he had a big sailboat, and he was always talking about a sailboat, but in reality, that's not a, he's not a captain, he's not a kind of person that, he's bought a sailboat, but he's a land lover. And he sees it as being something that he wants to get into, but he's bought himself a very big sailboat with no experience. <laughs> you know, so I don't know what his plans were going to be on that one. But I hope that him and his family were thinking of hiring the right captain or the right people to to man there. You just don't go out and buy yourself a supersized sailboat, especially a sailboat which, especially if you're contemplating using the sails to to sail without having the experience you need on it. You can keep yourself in hot water right away with one of those boats. And people trying to park a a large luxury yacht and they couldn't park it. And I remember I was right next to one of my family members who was a commercial fisherman. And commercial fishermen he owned large boats. Alright. And we're laughing it up there in the dock because this is one what seems to be a tourist, and he's parked, trying to park a large, uh, lux luxury boat. Can't park it. Uh, having a lot of problems, with, especially in an area where you have some currents. And uh, he was kind enough to tell the guy, "Listen, I'll help you out. Just give me the helms, and uh, you take a chance." You know, uh, this is back like a couple of decades ago. And they would now they probably would not do that because you're you're actually trying you're parking somebody's multi million dollar yacht <laughs> you know, and you may not want to take the chance of scraping the paint or getting then causing damage to it, but this guy of course he knows what he's doing he has large boats and uh and they took the boat and parked it right away and uh you know, it saved the guy all the trouble trying to park that boat. The guy was going. I don't know how Nagy didn't bust the engine on that boat. Nowadays, you got this boats are really set up to go with all kind of uh, equipment on it. And uh, people should. If you're gonna get into these big, large boats. Make sure you you know how to pilot the boat, man. Because if you don't, you're gonna be in some serious trouble. There, let me try on this side. Think about this lure. You can get pikes or you can get uh, walleyes with this kind of lure. It's one lure fits all. So we're now here at 8 o'clock. Just about two minutes on game time to 8 o'clock. And we're up to 80, 84 pounds here on Emerald Lakes. Let's see how much more we get here before. We got like one hour to go in the game here. One hour to uh, on game time to go. And then it hits nighttime. I don't have nighttime gear on here. I don't have the the uh, helmet with the lights on. And, uh, I don't have any of that. So I'll just keep fishing here for a little bit more. Let's see if I can get the wall lights in there to bite a little bit. Maybe I'll do so I change to that it's like a nighttime lure. But it catches fish in the daytime or nighttime. At least with me it has I done okay with it. So I mean up changing to that. It looks like this one here, but except it's like for night. There we go, number four, there you go. It's a neutral neutral uh lure. And this one is the right uh size for this rod. 
Let me go out here. Sometimes the pikes are way out there in that area. The bigger pikes uh, around this time. Uh, we'll try out here a little bit. I'll see how it goes. On this one, I got because this is a heavier lure. I got to adjust the speed. On the other one, I have the speed at the minimum because it's a light lure. This one here is a three fourth ounces there. See if we can get some of those wall lights there to bite on this. And if you look at the uh, map, you're going to see that uh, right now. Let me see, we'll go back to it. Uh, hang on. Uh, let's try to get the map. Look at the map. You can see that we're down, down the bottom here when it comes to this, uh, to the uh, temperature and everything. The water is, it's not in the peak time. Usually, when it's up in that yellow, is when you have the uh, the peak times to catch fish. Right now, it's gonna. I don't know what's gonna do on. If how's it gonna move? Let me see what it's gonna do here when it moves tonight. Uh, night, you're gonna have a peak right there at nine o'clock. And then it's gonna drop down at one o'clock. It'll drop down, and then it'll come back up around around two o'clock in the morning, all the way to five. So that's what you got for nighttime, for fishing at night. All right. So if you're fishing this game, that's what you're gonna be looking for, because you don't want to waste a lot of time if you're just gonna have a. I used to do the entire thing from five all the way to nine, but um, I, you know, you spend a lot of time not catching anything when it's down peak. Now, right now, at peak time is probably the best time to so move up, move the clock. It, lo it allows you to move the clock forward and peak and just fish the peak times. So let me go back to the game. Let's resume here. Let me see what I got. I'm still on the. Uh, let me try here on this side here as the uh, night here begins to fall. I haven't heard the uh, big, uh, the big frog. Big frog is like the indicator night's gonna fall. I haven't heard him. Maybe because I'm off the shore. I don't know. You can see there on uh, on the fish finder, it's like there's no activity on it. That's a good thing about having that fish finder. Maybe time to move. Yeah, there's no activity on it. Let's see if I can move around a little bit. Find some of the fish around here. There's some fish here in the center. It's moving back here a little bit. It's a good thing about this. You see, not all the boats here on fish on uh, on fishing planet come with this gear. Uh, you'll get some. You might have this, uh, like this nice boat here, but it won't have the. Uh, it might not have the motor in front. You need that motor there. That's a great one. It's a great thing to have. It's a great tool to have. And of course, you got your fish finder right up front. Let me fish here a little bit. Sometimes they'll end up coming back in this way a little closer here. And back up my uh, my boat a little bit just so it doesn't keep going forward. That was not a bite, I don't think. I think I might get stuck. Yeah, I had the line stuck in there. Yeah, I had a weed here. I don't know why you want to keep the weeds, but... You see the splashes there? Oh, there we go. We get something over there. For finding some of the junk there. That's always good to get a little extra there.
What I gotta do is I gotta change over to another lure. This one is not doing that good today. Let me change over to another lure. And let me just go a little forward. Change over to this uh, one red and the red and white one. Where was it? it was just it was just there now. Oh, there it is. I just had. It. All right. This is the correct lure for this rod. See so we get a couple more pikes in there. Let's see if we can make up to a hundred. We got about an hour to go here or less. Actually game time is faster than the regular time of course. And now we're up to uh we're about thirty minutes left for nighttime hits. Once nighttime hits, pretty much the pikes are gone. You won't see them back until the morning time. I'm talking about when the sun comes up. Alright. Let me try out here to the open. Maybe some of the I'm not sure if if I caught any of the walleyes with this lure before. I've used this lure before, but mostly I've got pikes and out of them. And uh over there at Moose Lake the lures will be different than what I'm using here. There'll be uh, also some casting spoons, but it'll be different ones. Larger spoons too. on this lure. There's a lure I haven't tried today. It's a hit and miss lure. I really haven't found a good spot where that lure works really really good but it just gets you a couple of fish and then you have to go back and find another lure. So let me try that see how it does. This blue lure it's hit and miss. Alright, uh, but like I said, you'll catch a couple of fish and then you have to go and change lure. Excuse me. I gotta drop the speed on it because this is a light lure. It's only quarter ounce. Sometimes you have a couple of fishes on it, and then that's it. Something was following. Yeah, I don't have a. If I had a different rod, and uh, also the line was a little different, I probably can cast a lot further. The uh, lure is too light for this rod. And the line just doesn't put the line up. Yeah, no luck at all, Nap. Let me go back to my inventory when I see something. Sometimes I'll let you put a worm on it. <laughs> Not on this one. Let me see this one there. Oops. Uh, let me go there. Let me go to this one. I'm gonna go to this, uh, put a uh, a worm on this one. It's now getting a little darker. Uh, let me see if it lets me cast on this because it's saying it's too light. Uh, for the wall lights, I remember one time I had a really good. It was really doing really good with the worm and the and the wall lights, but we'll see what it does now. It kind of changes, and I'm glad they changed things here. They, that it's not always the same. Cause sometimes, there you go. Got a we had a bite on there. Now there are some lures that will allow you to combine the worm 
and the uh, man, what in the world's going down there? It's like they bite and they let go. It's like the uh, they let you combine the warm with the low. It was another kind of a lure. I think even some of the big ones. I've done it a couple times. Well, what I'm doing is I'm letting it sink toward the bottom. I didn't bring it in. There you go. We got something on there. It's probably a walleye. There we go. No, it's actually not. I thought it was going to be a walleye. It's not. It's a pike. Michigan's got a lot of the uh, walleyes in Michigan. You can catch a lot of the uh, walleyes over there at the uh, St. Clair Lake. There's an area there. I don't know if it's still good because I went. I remember I caught a lot of walleyes there, and then about a year later after that, I played the game again, and I went to the same spot, and wasn't having no luck. Maybe it was just that time, but there was an area that you could catch a lot of the walleyes. Uh, catch them, and I actually caught a lot at night. Let's see what this is going to do here. So like I tell you, this is not really a tutorial. Uh, I'm showing you, I'm telling you the techniques that I'm using. Basically, it's fishing me, just telling you some of the ideas and how to catch some of these fish. And uh, just going along, just doing almost the entire game here for this one. Uh, there you go. Something just, something just uh, once again, I'm not sure if it's a... Uh, normally, I don't see the pikes biting biting the getting the warm here, I don't see. Maybe something new going on here. Usually they go out to the spoons. They don't go out to the warm. Well, we'll try it out now that they're kind of biting. Seem could be them. Good splashes there. And we got about uh, another 15 minutes of game time here because night's about to fall here. If I get this closer to the weeds over here. Yeah, like I said, normally I don't see the pikes biting into the uh, into the glowworm. Cast this way here. Back over here again. You can get about halfway before you start bringing it in. There's another rod that I'm gonna see if I get space because I don't have space for more rods here on the. But I, you know you have to change them. I like the one I have the uh, when I get space to sh have the rods already sh set up. And all I gotta do is just pick up the rod and that's it. You know, I hate to have to take all the motors out and put a whole brand new rod and, and do all that to it because then later on I gotta change it over to I, I gotta possibly change them over again. So. Because I'm over in a lower low level, I'm not able to purchase the one that has the uh I believe eight rods or seven rods that you can carry. And that's what I want to move to. So that way I can have a rod which is really good here on uh Man, we got something here. There you go. Hey, it's a wallet. It's a two inch it's a two over almost two and a half pounds here, eighteen inches long. Uh fifty six on the XP's and 438, so that's a pretty good size one. So you see, how I got that with the glow worm. Put a couple more times. But there is a rod that does really good, and uh, that I can set up out here with the. Uh, it's not as strong as this rod, but it still does good with the pikes. The size of the pikes over here. And also with the wall lights, and you can cast, you don't have to worry about 
not, you know, having it too much of a heavier rod. They won't cast off the quarter ounces lures. Maybe I'll I'll bring that out here one day to do the. Uh, we'll do a program on that, just on that rod. Just use that rod. See how it does. I got a walleye with that one. So we're up to 88 pounds there. And oh, we have another bite there. And we're around two minutes from game time here where the uh, sun's going to drop. It's about the next probably, possibly 30 seconds, 40 seconds, you'll see the sun drop. Start getting night done. There you go. No sooner than that. And then we'll have about a couple of seconds of this, and then you're going to see nighttime fall. And there it is. Now the uh, the pikes are going to vanish, and what you're going to have is the walleyes possibly left here. And like I said, I don't have any nighttime vision here. I mean, nighttime. Uh, uh, gear like for like I don't have the uh, night helmet the helmet that has like night time maybe one time the developers of this game wouldn't be nice enough to give me one <laughs> as a gift you know there's one there's a, a game out there called Russian fishing and they have a, like a lantern which I which I think is really I think this game should have something like that a, a choice with the lights like a lantern. So what is this we got here? There you go. Let's see a nice walleye there. And uh, the walleyes do. I I worked. I've been here on the Emerald Lakes and I caught a lot of the old walleyes with this worm at night. So let's see how they do. One after another. But now I don't know. It's been a while since I've done this kind of fishing here at night on Emerald Lakes and no lights. But like I was saying, the uh, that Russian fishing one, it's called, I literally it's called, I think it's called Russian fishing. Uh, and it's a pretty good game. Of course, not at this level, but it's still a good game. Uh, they have lanterns for nighttime. So you put a lantern right next to you. And uh, it's pretty good. Because it kind of gives you a little bit more realistic like if you're on this boat and you're out there literally on the, one of these lakes here let's say you're there really is this kind of lake out there that's probably what you're going to have is a lantern put a lantern one of those uh one of those nice battery uh the one that has the uh not the gas one the, the forensic one that's like the uh the regular light bulb kind of office light bulb you can think of. not a light bulb but There we go. Set another one right there. And if you see that, all of I'm talking to you and I cut off the conversation, it's because I'm probably getting a feel on my on my PlayStation uh, control. I was just getting something there. I know something was beginning to bite there. This is what I like about the difference between the the computer and playing this game on PlayStation is that feel that you get on the control that you're not going to get on the computer. The computer's not going to bright bright like that. <laughs> if it is, it's probably going to break it a little bit. So you've been catching one after another. We can get another one here. There you go. Oh, that was right there. It was like really close. almost had him. We'll see if we can bring another one in there. Yeah, you can do. Uh, you you don't need the boat. Uh, you can get on the dock and put, do a pretty fair job of it. Of coming out here and catch quite a few fish. And uh, just use pretty much the same lures that I'm using here. Some of the gear that I got should be doing okay. 
Let me go back here. But sometimes these wallites, what they do is they, uh, walleyes, they end up higher toward the center. If not, I'll change back over there. What I do is I let it go down, like, almost to the bottom there. Before I start bringing it. Basically, it's, uh, it's stop and go action on here. Even with the worm, I'm doing that. Now, you can also use bait. On out here, out here, you can use your live minnows and this kind of stuff. Nighttime, the lures have worked out pretty good. Glow worms have done pretty good at night here on emerald eggs. I had a bite there, but not much came out of it. Let me continue to go here. Uh, you got that buffer or something? It's a weird name for that fish. Buffer or buffer or something like that. And there, uh, you can use uh, some of the bait on that. You use some of the. Uh, matter of fact, maybe I'll have. I think I might have a rod set up for that, so I'll, I can pull it up, and we'll try to see if we can bring in a couple of those fishes out here. And uh, you got that moose bait or something like that, and a couple of the other ones. Yeah, they'll go for. Let me see if I bring it up. There was a fish right after at the end there. Let's see what I got there in the inventory. What I got here. Alright. I think I have this one set to go for that. Just want to make sure what kind of. I got a 15 pound. 50 pounds drag on there, which is not bad. And let me find the right bait for that. Yeah, that duck, uh, duck mass, uh, meat, duck, that one does, uh, that one does pretty good, let me see. Damn it. I'm still getting used to this. That one does okay. And well, there was something else, I'm trying to remember what else that the, uh, the blood does okay, the, uh, the blood bait does okay also. But here, I caught a lot of those fishes over there at uh, Moose Lake. They have them here, but most of them I caught them in Moose Lake, and I used the uh, that duck mess uh, meat, mince meat. Uh, I used that actually there, and uh, those that work. Let me try, and we'll see what we we'll, we'll try the blood, and we'll try this one first. First, let me try this one here, and uh, it's kind of shallow here. And I'm right now at about 51 inches. Let me see here if I can if I can move the settings on. Oops, I'm still getting used to this. Which one's the one that goes over to the? Here it is. Um, maybe I'll move it down a little bit. Here, because we're going to be close to the shore here. About 29 inches, I think, should be good. Around there. Alright, let me go out, take this one out here. Let me go back over, because I think I can put the, uh... Hang on, now I'll leave it there. So what you want to do here, you just want to get a little closer to the weeds here. Don't put it in the weeds, whatever you do, like I just did. <laughs> Get it out of the weeds. See what I mean? You see, it's shallow right there. It hasn't even used up that 29 inches. There it is. So you gotta get it a lot close to the weeds there, way a little bit. And let's see if we can get one of these uh, catfish on there. Let's see. If you wait a couple of minutes and you don't see no movement on your uh, floater there, then you get yourself something else. Get uh, some other bait, plus possibly some of the blood bait. I don't see no movement out there. 
Now, if you're going to go toward the middle, you, you're going to have to go a lot deeper than the 29 inches. And there'll be, uh, they may, I don't think, I don't know if there's any uh, bluegill catfish. I don't think there is any on there. Yeah, I don't see no movement on there at all. Let me go to the, uh, the blood bait. We'll do a little bit of the blood bait on there. Whoops. Um, so yeah. Right there. So you can see I'm using also the uh, catfish hook I'm using on there. Uh, I'm just aiming for like around here. That's a good spot there, I think. It's a little shallow. Doesn't matter if it's like that. It's fine. We'll let it sit there for a little bit. We'll see what happens. Now, if you're with that, that Mississippi Delta, whatever it is, the one out there, the that one there, um, blood bait works really good on that one. Probably make a video on that one so you guys to show you what I mean. And it does pretty good. And I think there are some of the bluegills out there, uh, catfish. I'm not too much lucky with them. Me bring it in a little bit more. Nothing going on with it. Usually you'll see some kind of moving by now. There's a couple of fish down. I can see a fish finder. A couple of fish down there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be getting anything with that. It just, there's nothing there so far. I don't see anything. If I was over there in Michigan, I would have, by now, would have gotten a bite. I would have gotten a fish possibly by now. On the uh, on that moose mix bait or mix uh was it minced me uh, meat duck minced meat duck minced meat is what it is. So let me bring this rod back up. A uh, couple more casts. And I think I'll be calling it quits here. So right now I'm up to ninety three pounds. And uh, let me go over to the uh, the one that I have the uh, that glow bait. I think it was this one. Yep. And we're gonna try to get some of these uh, walleyes out here. If we get a strike from the walleyes, are there you go. Yep, that's another one right there. It's uh, almost three pounds. Yeah. Let's see if we get some more of these. You can get them from the dock. You don't have to be on the boat. Uh, just cast like a normal, like around this direction I'm at from the dock. With the walleyes, there's a technique that you can use on them. Uh, never cast in the same spot. <laughs> uh, cast in different spots. Move from one spot to another spot. I just had a bite there. But I uh, lost it. If 
what I'll do is I'll go to this area then wait that gets down to the bottom a bit Speed's good, but not biting so far. Well, then I'll swing back over here. Just had a bite on them right there was a bite. Well, they go down a little bit. See we can get something else here. Over here to this area. There you go. There's another one right there. I'll cast one more time this way. Only a couple of casts in the same area and then you kind of have to rotate. So we're now up to a hundred and two pounds. Oh, okay. You know, in the daytime I couldn't see it too good, but I'm actually in a, I'm okay. I'm in a the right fishing uh, game because I have two different type of uh, fishing planets and this one does have the uh, 550 pound uh, pin what it has is a 220 pound limit on the size of fish you can get I don't think we'll be pulling any 200 pound fish out of here <laughs> This place, the uh, fishing planet has two of these games, and basically they're the same. Uh, is it one is like you own the game, uh, and some things that you don't. It's a lot of the game comes with a lot of stuff, but it's different. Uh, matter of fact, the South American uh, spots that you find them on the free version doesn't show up on here. I'm hoping that they put them. Because I play a lot of the fisherman more than I play the the fishing planet regular one, and I'm hoping that they put some of those spots also on there. Yeah, 
I had a bite on there. Let me change over to this side. It's right now game time is like 10 o'clock. There you go, there's another one right there. Uh -huh. Almost three pounds. Uh, so the uh, glow worm is still doing good. It has a jig head of uh, half an ounce, size two. And then the glow worm. There's another one right there. Couple fishes there. It's about two and a half pounds in that one. That's what I mean by going back and forth. Where you fish a little bit on one side, then fish a little bit on the other side. Back over here. I think mostly wall lights in here at night time. that one time See if we get anything else out here Okay, seems like, the, let me see the time here. Yeah, it's going to start going downhill really fast. So what I want to say is, I want to end the game here. I hope you guys enjoy it. I gave you some tips here on how to fish uh, Emerald Lakes. And I hope you guys enjoy that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give some thumbs up. And also commentary. If you like the channel, say some nice commentaries. That also helps out on here. So keep coming back. Uh, and um, I'm going to be doing some other uh, some other licks. Uh, as I say, I don't have the. Uh, I'm not doing it on my PC. On my PC, I pretty much cover almost all the licks. And um, here I'm because I had to restart it on the PlayStation. I don't have all the licks. So I'm kind of working myself up to those lakes. So hopefully we'll get up to all those lakes and we can cover all of them. So for the ones that we don't have cover, of course, we're not going to cover for now. But there are other smaller lakes that uh, I'll look into. We're going to cover those and do some fishing on those lakes. And just keep an eye on the title of the video and what it says on there. Yeah, I'm going to put the names on the lakes that I'm doing. So that way you know what I'm up to. So anyway, have a good one. And have a blessed one. Thank you for coming out here. And uh, thank you for your thumbs up. And thank you for your subscription and all that. If you're out to subscribe. 
and uh, we'll see you back on the next one. Of course, I do other games out here. I do the high-speed games, you know, all other kind of games. You, as you've seen my, if you see my uh, website, you'll see that what I mean. I do all kind of games out here. So, but these uh, fishing ones to relax. The other ones is more to take tension up. <laughs> so it's different things, uh, different way of relaxing, I guess. Anyway, have a good one. Have a blessed one, and I will see you. Bye bye now.